Okay, so today, now, just to set the stage for everybody who's not familiar with these calls and what we do, uh, my name's Matt, I'm kind of a lead trainer here, um, and basically what I do is I hop on these every Monday, and because you're part of the Marketers Club, we usually cover something to do with marketing, right? So today, and, and in typical Matt style, what we're going to do today is we're going to run through uh, kind of a, a almost flow chart type deal of how to, when you're setting up some sort of paid advertising, let's say Facebook is going to be the one that we're going to use today, um, how do you optimize it, right? How do you test certain things? How do you know what are your benchmarks in terms of click-through rate and uh, even um, uh, cost per lead and things like that, right? So uh, a lot of times here's what happens. When you start running ads online and somebody has a training, like I have a training in our back office of how to set up ads on Facebook and Instagram, right? A lot of times what happens then is people get into those trainings, place their ads, and they come to me and say, what do I do now? Well, what do I do now? I, I got 10 leads and they cost me you know, $40 to get 10 leads. Is that good? I don't know. Should I be getting them for less? I don't know. None of them bought anything. What do I do now? So what I want to do today is I want to walk you through a little bit of a, it's kind of a flow chart style deal, um, but just kind of walk you through, you know, exactly um, how I would do it if I was starting and I've run Man, I, I don't even know. I've run a lot of money on Facebook ads. I should go calculate. And, and in addition to that, I've helped uh, right around 500 people who are brand new to the internet and internet marketing to get ads launched on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, let's start with one presupposition, though. Uh, why Facebook and Instagram? The reason I would start with Facebook and, and Instagram is because, number one, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So when you log into the back office for Facebook ads, you're going to see the option to do uh, uh, Instagram ads as well. So for me, at least, that's kind of where I would start. Um, it's, it's super easy. It's efficient. Um, and if you can believe it or not, still there are pockets and holes that are, that are kind of untapped that you can tap into and advertise to, and the conversions can be really, really good from Facebook and Instagram, okay? So that's why I kind of I would start there. There's other higher level reasons that I could get into, but just for the sake of this call, I'm not going to get into that level of detail right now. Okay. So in the last couple of minutes, we've had a couple people pop on. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna literally share my screen right now. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk through sort of a a flow of how I would and how I have for tens, maybe I don't know how. I'll just say, just so I don't stretch the truth or anything, tens of thousands of dollars worth of Facebook ads. And this is kind of a formula that I've taken to um, measure my ads and track my ads and make sure that they're performing well. Now, maybe you're watching this video, you're brand new, and, and you're like, hey, I, I'm just getting started here, man. Like, I'm just, I'm kind of just getting going. Whenever that happens, whenever you're in that place, what I usually recommend to people is I, I tell them one thing. I say, hey, you're going to be at this point very soon, and what you need to do is soak in as much information as possible, take diligent notes, so that if there's something that doesn't make sense, number one, you can ask me a question about it, because we do Q&A at the end, or number two, it'll make sense to you in about a month after you go through some training to teach yourself how do I run Facebook ads? How do I measure Facebook ads? Okay, you guys got that? Now, before I get into this and I get a billion questions um, from people on, are these replays available in the back office? Yes, they are. If you log into the back office, you go to products, and then you go to marketers club, you'll see that there's marketers club replays, all of them back, dating back to January. Okay, and we are working on getting descriptions written for each of those videos so that you can reference and, and know what videos contain what information. Okay, so we're working on that. We don't have it quite yet. Bear with us. We're getting there. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, if you're running Facebook ads and you're getting ready to measure and track, um, measure, I can't write, and track your results. Okay. Now, I'm not a great drawer, but generally how I like to lay things out is to draw 
kind of the process, okay? So, um, look, there's, there's a few different phases. I, I'm going to break them down into three phases, okay? I'm going to break them down into three phases of how I would personally uh, go through and measure. So, um, if you're keeping track, just say that there's three phases, okay? Now, the first phase, and I'll go through the first phase, and then I'll erase it, and I'll go to the second phase. So if you want to draw this out with me, that's fine. Um, but the first phase, let's say you go out and you place a Facebook ad, okay? You place an ad on Facebook, and uh, so you have, you know, a headline, you have a, a description, you have text, you have an image or a video, right? You have all of these things, and you place the ad. Now, let's say that you spend your first $100, or maybe it's not your first, I don't know, but let's just say $100 for example. You spend $100 and you get 10 leads, okay? I'm gonna use even, even easy numbers so that we can all understand what's going on here, right? And that would be a cost of $10 for each lead. We call that $10 per lead, and the terminology for that would be CPL, cost per lead, okay? Hit the hand raise button in Zoom if you're all familiar with or you kind of get that terminology. Uh, did that make sense to where we are right now? There's a little button you can click on the Zoom panel and it says raise hand or it looks like a little hand, like a palm. Hit that if, if you're kind of with me so far, okay? If you're not with me at this point early on, it probably isn't going to make a lot of sense to you if we keep going, okay? All right. Cool, that was most people here. All right. Okay, so if, if we go out and place that ad, there's gonna be a couple questions that we're gonna be asking, okay? And there's gonna be a couple metrics initially that we're gonna be looking for, okay? So our first metric that we're gonna be looking for is something called our click-through rate, okay? Write that down, click-through rate. This is our CTR. Okay, now you're building a little bit of a knowledge base for these kind of uh, analytics, these metrics, CTR. Well, now if you're interviewing somebody to run your ads and they say, well, what's your CTR? You can tell. Okay, so what we're looking for is an over or under 1%, okay? 1%. What's our click-through rate? Is it over or is it under 1%, all right? If it is over, then what we're going to look at is we're going to look at, is it over or under 3%, okay? If it is under 1%, we're going to kill, all right? <laughs> we're just going to kill it. If you go out and place an ad, and you're looking at the ad, and you're looking at the statistics, and you're under 1% click-through rate, meaning for every 100 people who see your ad, less than one of those people is gonna click on it, it's a really bad ad, okay? We're hoping for click-through rates 3% and well above, all right? So, is it 3%? Well, if it's over this 1% mark, but it's not yet at 3%, um, then we can do a couple things, okay? So if it's under, we're going to kill. If it is over 3%, awesome. Then we're going to move on, okay? And that will be moving on to uh, another set of analytics that we'll talk about here in just a second, okay? So if I sit down and look at my Facebook ad, I spend $100, my click-through rate, which is in your Facebook ads back office, that's one of the main metrics they'll show you. It's just a column in their chart, and it says click-through rate, bing, and it'll give you a percentage, okay? Now, if it's over 3%, you'll move on, okay? We're going to move on to looking at different metrics. If it is under, under, oh my God, I, I can't, I just, I can't write, guys. Hang on. If it is under 3%, okay, then what we're going to look at doing is uh, rewriting some ads, okay? 
Okay, rewriting ad copy. Okay. Um, and we're going to look into testing new audiences. Okay. Testing new audiences. So if I go out and place an ad, let's say for the sake of example, I, I go out and I place an ad on Facebook and I place an ad and I'm targeting entrepreneurs. Okay. My targeting that's in the Facebook settings. You can choose who you want to target. I'm going to target entrepreneurs. Okay. So I, let me move this around on my screen just a little bit here, make more space. Okay, so if I'm targeting entrepreneurs and um, I'm getting a, let's say I'm getting a 2%, 2% click through rate, okay? Now, it's not quite 3%, so I want to get that click through rate over 3%. So then what I might do is I might target small business owners, SBO, might target small business owners, I might target affiliate marketers, I might target you name it, Tony Robbins, or so, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Raise your hand. Does that make sense? Click the hand raise button if that makes sense to you. If I am over 1%, but I'm still under 3%, I'm going to essentially duplicate my ad and just try a different audience, because maybe I'm fishing in the wrong pond. Okay, you guys got that? Okay, most people got that. Okay, so, so I'm gonna test out different audiences, um, and then if that doesn't work, then what that tells me is that my ad targeting isn't the problem, okay? What's the problem? Well, it's probably then my ad, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my ad, or at the very least, here's a little tip. You know when you log into Facebook? Here, let me show you. I'm going to show this on my, on my camera right here. <clears throat> So when I log into, when I log into, here's an ad that actually just came up. So when I log into Facebook, now look at my, look at my camera real quick, okay? Here's the ad, and then here's the ad copy, right? Can you all see that? Type to me yes in the comments if you can see that. Type yes in the comments or the chat if you can see that okay. So you'll notice that there's only three sentences there, and then what does it say? Continue reading, right? There's three sentences, and then it says continue reading. Well, guess what? If you're getting, if you're getting less than 1% click, so there's essentially, okay, here's what it says. Here's what it says. It says, are you, are you sure you want to carry on trading time for memories? Before now, it was easy to live life thinking it was all there ever was going to be. But now you know there's a better, and then it says continue reading. So maybe rather than rewriting the whole ad, maybe you just change the first three sentences of your ad and test that. Raise your hand if that makes sense. Hit the hand raise if that makes sense. You don't have to rewrite the whole ad you can just go in and rewrite the first three sentences. So you wouldn't actually edit the ad. What you would do is you would clone or duplicate the ad so that um, you're, not, you're not messing with the already existing statistics, okay? So, so look at my screen here real quick. If I have ad number one here and I'm getting 2%, I'm not going to edit this, okay? I will not edit this ever. What I'm going to do is I will duplicate it, okay? And I'll create ad number two, right? So that I have fresh ad statistics. You should almost never, unless you don't have very many, uh, unless you spent like, let's say $2, you should never be editing these ads. You never want to edit them because there's statistics already there built from your previous results. So how are you going to tell if you're getting better? Okay. Uh, plus, Facebook's algorithm will function much better for you if you duplicate it and start fresh with new statistics. Okay. So I'll rewrite the ad copy. All right. And I'll redo that. If my click through, and I'll do that until I get over 3%. Period. End of story. 
I will do that until I get over 3%. If I can't get over 3%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to admit to myself that I suck at copywriting and targeting. I'm going to go type in upwork.com and I'm going to find a Facebook ad copywriter for me and I'm going to have somebody else do it for me. Okay? <laughs> Got it? At that point, you just give up. You say, hey, you know what? This copywriting thing, I need to go find a copywriting course at some point. But until then, I'm going to have somebody write me an ad to get me a 3%. Okay? Now, if all of that doesn't work, there is a final thing where you test a new photo. Okay? You can also test photos with the ads. Those are really kind of your main things that you can change and switch and adjust until you get over 3% of a click-through rate. Are you guys with me so far? Type in the chat. If you're with me so far, type to me, yes, I'm with you so far. I get it. That's my first metric is my click-through rate. That's a big metric. It tells you how, uh, um, how much curiosity you're invoking so far. Benjamin's with me. Joy, happy. Hey, happy. Good to see you. Uh, Malik is with me. Mary's with me. Bruce, Deborah, John, Gyro. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Ranchagoda. Okay. Charlotte, Paul, Adrian, Laxman, Lorena, Justin, got it. Okay, good, 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 good. Awesome. Okay, so here's the thing. That's our first metric, all right? Now, I'm going to clear this out, okay? And now what I want to do is after we get to 3%, then what? Okay, so now we hit a 3% click-through rate. Now what do we do, okay? Now what we're going to look at is another metric called cost per click. Can anybody tell me in the chat, type to me, what, what is cost per click? What does that mean, okay? This is also called uh, CPC. So uh, there's another lingo term for you. A lot of people will say CPC advertising, cost per click advertising. What does that mean, though? Tell me what that means. Uh, it's how much for cost per click, duh. How much you're paying per click, okay? How much I pay when someone clicks my link. Now, on Facebook, they actually break it down from CPC to LCPC. So these are for links. These are just clicks in general. So let's say somebody clicks your photo. Let's say somebody clicks your uh, continue reading, right? Continue reading. Links down here is only for clicking learn more or a link in your ad copy that will actually take them to your website. So this is really the one that you want to pay attention to. Okay, this is the one that we're paying attention to is links cost per click. And here's what we're looking for. We are looking for and hoping to get beneath a dollar per link click. Now, if you can get below a dollar per link click, you're doing a really dang good job. You are getting traffic at a really good clip, okay? If you can't get that, for instance, here's, here's a caveat. If you're in, let's say, the fitness world, okay, fitness, and there's some other niches, but you might have to pay three to five dollars, okay, per link click on Facebook and Instagram. It's just because there's more there's more competition. There's higher competition for that, okay. So you might pay a little bit more in certain industries, but what you're looking for ultimately, what you want to optimize down to is a dollar per link click, okay? If you can't, if the answer to one dollar per link click is no, you do not, so let's say you're at a dollar fifty, let's say you're at two dollars, whatever it is, right? If the answer is no, here's what I typically recommend for people, is changing the image, okay? If you don't get there, what I recommend is changing the image. You can also change other things like the headline. 
Okay, you could try an emoji in the headline part. Okay, something like that to draw more attention to the learn more button. All right, but a lot of times for the link click, if you change the image, it's going to capture their attention better. It's going to get them to click more. Okay, so you can also look, this is another place where you can test uh, the actual copy of the ad. You can also test um, audiences. Okay. Again, so similar things that you would have test on the cost per, um, on the, on the click through rate, you can also test those on your cost per click. Okay. So those are things, but again, uh, start with the image for the, for this piece and then see if, you know, maybe you need to change the copy a little or change the audiences. And look, if you do a bunch of tests, let's say you test 10 more audiences and three more batches of ad copy. And what you keep coming back to is a dollar 80 per link click. That's okay. Got it. That's okay. There isn't a right or wrong here. I'm just trying to provide you with some benchmarks to start with. Am I making sense? Type to me, type to me in the chat. If I'm making sense to you, just type to me. Yes. Or you can raise your hand. That's cool too. Is this making sense so far? Okay, what we're talking about with link clicks is if you have a website and you want to get somebody to your website, then you're going to get them to click a link in Facebook, a learn more button or something like that and get them to your website. Got it? Okay, so now this is, this is, um, Every metric that you're going to really be testing initially on Facebook, except for one more metric. Okay. One more metric. So if our, if our cost per click, our cost, cost per link click is under or less than one dollar I'm just using US dollars so if this is different for you you can do your conversion is under a dollar then we're gonna be looking for our cost per lead okay C P L now what I mean by this is generally a lot of you here are looking to generate leads okay so this is on an opt-in page so here's here's how the funnel works Okay, right here, we have an ad. This ad, when they click the button, learn more button, it's going to automatically take them to what we call an opt-in page or a landing page, okay? This is where you'll collect their name and their email. Is everybody here kind of familiar with something like this? Raise your hand, hit the, put, press the hand raise button if you're familiar with this basic format. You click learn more on a Facebook ad, you jump over to a name and email page. Does this make sense to you guys? I want to make sure I want more engagement is it, I got to make sure that that piece makes sense because this is kind of foundational. Okay, good. Got a lot of hands. Good, 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 good. Okay, so our cost per lead is whatever it costs us to get one of these uh, opt-ins for somebody to type their name and email into our box and hit submit because that's a lead that means we got their name and we got their email and they said I want to learn more information about whatever it is that you're selling tell me more that's our cost per lead so in our example we said we spent a hundred dollars and we got ten leads so that made our cost per lead ten dollars CPL Okay, $10 of CPL. Now, with a cost per lead, generally, guys, this can vary per industry, but generally what we're looking for in terms of a cost per lead is we're looking for right in the range of $3 or less. Three or less. If you're really good and you have a huge, just a really good offer, for somebody on the front end, you could get under a dollar, okay? You could get under a dollar, but that's pretty rare, okay? It's pretty rare, but you could get under a dollar. 
if you do a really good job and you have incredible incentives for people, all right? But your cost per lead, we're looking for $3 or less for that cost per lead. Now, again, fitness instructor, instructors, they could pay up to $20 per lead, $30 per lead, okay? Depends on the level. For instance, track with me here. If I'm asking for, let's say I send out my, my opt-in form is name, email, phone, full address, and I ask them five more questions. My cost per lead is going to go up because I'm asking them for more detail. However, the quality of that lead is now way higher because they're more committed to the process. I want to type yes if that makes sense to you. There's different qualities of lead. There's different quality of leads. Does that make sense to everybody here? Type yes or raise your hand if that makes sense to you. Because I want that to, I, the reason I want that to be really clear is sometimes people get so sucked into getting the lowest cost leads possible, but not in every case does that actually work out. Not in every single case does that end up meaning people are going to buy you want high quality opt-ins and leads as well. So there's kind of a balance point, right? There's kind of a balancing act, balancing game that you're doing is you want to you wanna qualify them a little bit by having them enter their name and email, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the traffic that's coming through there is actually good quality traffic and that they're not just kind of, I don't want to say loserville, but loserville, just not really good quality people or good quality human beings, okay? All right, I'll, I'll get off my high horse on that deal. But okay, so if not, if our cost per lead, if, if we've got our cost per link click under $1 per link click, but our cost per lead is over $3 per lead, then um, tell me, tell me, I want you guys to tell me. Type to me in the chat what's going on there. If I'm just using a name and email and my expectation is, you know what, I should be able to get a $3 lead, what's, what's happening there? What's going on? Um, what, what's, what's not working? What is working? What's not working? What's going on there? Tell me in the chat. What's not performing? What's not doing well? You guys tell me. Okay, ad copy, image, there's not enough value, um, not enough people clicking, uh, congruency, interesting, okay, the headline potentially, headline, headline, okay. Now let's pause for a second because our cost per link click is under a dollar. So everything in terms of getting somebody to click, getting somebody to click is good, right? Everything up until then is good, meaning the headline, the ad copy, the image, all of that stuff is good. Now somebody said something and Happy just said it as well. There's a problem with our opt-in page, okay? There's a problem with our congruency, right? So, a couple things. We're gonna go look at our opt-in page, okay? And here's what I'll do, just, just so you're all aware. Here's exactly what I do. I pull open on the same screen my Facebook ad and then I'll pull open my opt-in page and I'll have them sitting open on the same screen on my computer. This is really cool. Because then I can, I can put my eyeballs on the opt-in page and the Facebook ad at the exact same time and I can look at them and I can ask the question, here's the magic word, are they congruent? Write the word congruent down if you're taking notes. Because if, if what I'm saying here in my Facebook ad is not the exact same thing as what's over here on my opt-in page, does that make very much sense? Nope. 
People are clicking though. So just to be clear, the audience is not the problem. The audience isn't the problem. I've captivated my audience, right? I got my audience right because my cost per link click is under a dollar. Everyone in that audience is very interested in what my ad says. But then for some reason they get on the opt-in page and it's not congruent. I'm not giving the same messaging. My messaging is wrong. Got it? Am I making sense? Type to me in the chat box if I'm making sense or not. Is this making sense? Umer, Happy, Benjamin, a lot of sense. Lorena, John, Jermel, Charlotte, all caps, yes. I love it. Adrian, Deborah. Okay. So here's the thing is this piece here, if I'm over $3 per lead, I know that I got the audience. I know I captivated them. I know everything, my ad, my image, they're all kick ass. But if I'm over $3 per lead, then guess what? Something's not converting. Something's not congruent between my ad and my opt-in page. So I got to figure out what that is. The first thing that I'm going to look at, okay? So if I am over, over $3 per lead, then what I want to do is I'm going to look at my headline on my opt-in page, okay? I'm gonna look at the headline on my opt-in page, right? So on an opt-in page, if I'm trying to collect name and email, generally, here's, here's the things I'm gonna have on that page. I'm gonna have a headline, all right? I'm gonna have um, a form with name and email, and sometimes that's all we have. But sometimes beneath that, I'll also have a little bit of uh, sub-headline copy just beneath it to give more information. But the big elements, the big piece is this headline, okay? So here's what I would recommend to you, and, and please, this is super important, is on your Facebook ad, or whatever you're advertising. This could be the same thing for Google, any advertising platform. You're gonna look at your ad copy. You're gonna look at your headline. And you're going to figure out a way to make this headline match almost exactly what is in your Facebook ad. All right? Does that make sense to you? That will get your cost per lead under $3 if all the other metrics are there and together, okay? Does that make sense? Type to me yes if that's making sense to you. You're going to look at that Facebook ad, you're gonna see the messaging that you're giving, and you're going to match that freaking exactly in this headline. There is no need to get super creative on an opt-in page. You do not need crazy creative on an opt-in page. You don't need it. All the opt-in page is, is it's just a stepping stone. It's just a stepping stone. That's all it is. An opt-in page is just a page where somebody clicks your ad and they look at that headline, they read it, and their brain says to them, this is exactly what I came for. This is exactly why I'm here, okay? This is exactly the reason I clicked this ad. You see what I mean? Everybody wants to get cute. Everybody wants to put these cute headlines and make a bunch of background images and videos and then the page doesn't perform and it's just a mess. Keep it simple, stupid. My, my high school football coach used to always say, um, he functioned the way he would coach the team was KISS, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. Okay, that's what he would always say to us. Same thing goes for advertising. You should write your ads like you're writing to a 10 year old. You should make everything very, very congruent. That is the most important marketing tip I can ever give you, okay? Okay, so once that's fixed, um, does, 
I just have a question here. Does a $10 Facebook ad generate good leads? I don't know what that means. What do you mean by $10 Facebook ad? It, is it $10 a day? Um, you can generate good leads on Facebook with any budget, any budget. You can generate leads on Facebook with $3 a day if you want. Seriously. You can spend $3 a day. Three times 30 is 90. You can generate for 90 to 100 bucks a month. You can generate consistent lead flow every single day online. No problem. Okay? No problem at all. All right. So after cost per lead, once you get that beneath a certain amount, then there's going to be more kind of um, – there's going to be there's going to be more uh, pieces to it. Okay, there's going to be um, your your CPA, which means cost per acquisition. Okay, cost per acquisition, which is a really important metric. In turn, and if you, I just had a couple people say they just came in late, started late. You're going to want to watch the replay. The replay replay will be uploaded here in a few hours. Just log into the back office, watch the replay. You're going to want to watch this whole thing maybe twice. Cost per acquisition is what's it cost you for a new customer? Okay, what's it what's it cost you for a new customer? I can't I can't write, but cost for each new customer that you're acquiring. Okay, now that is something that you can track in Facebook ads with a special pixel. We're not going to get into all that detail right now. What I wanted to get you to was this point here, cost per lead, okay? Once you've fixed and made everything congruent, you start with, now let's kind of recap the, the process of what this has looked like to get here. We started with, who can tell me in the chat, who can tell me what metric we started with as our very first metric? I want to recap this with you and I want to make sure you retain some of what we talked about. What was the first metric that we looked at? The very first one. You're correct. C T R click through rate. Got it. Bingo. Okay. And what did we want our click through rate to be a above? What did what are we what are we looking for that to be greater than or higher than? Bruce got it. Umer got it. Mary, good job. Saad, uh, Fadla, Deborah. Nope. Adrian, not not one. Alexis, Lorena got it. Joanna got it. Happy got it. We want it to be above three percent. You got it. Okay. If it's under one percent, type to me in the chat. If it's under one percent, what's our what are we doing? If our click-through rate is less than 1%, what do we do? What do we do? What's the word? Kill it. Yeah, sorry to use such gruesome language. <laughs> but we kill it, right? Done. Over. We're, we're done with it. We got to start over. It's a terrible ad, okay? If it's above 3%, then what are we moving on to? What's our next, next metric we're going to look for? We place our ad. We look at our stats a week later. The click-through rate, what, is, what are we looking at next? You guys got it. Who's got it? Bruce, Fadlip, John, Yana. It is CPC specifics to links, right? Specifically to links. Okay, so our CPC, which is our cost per click, cost per click, okay? So... Uh, what are we looking for our CPC to be above? What are we looking for in dollars, U.S. dollars? What are we looking for? Cost per click. What are we hoping our cost per click will be? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We want this to be under what? What's our, we want it to be under a dollar. You got it. Yes, one dollar, okay? We want our cost per click to be less than a dollar, Okay. If, if we can't do that or we're playing in an industry, right? Um, so let's, let's industry specific, but we might be playing in an industry where that's not doable. That's, that is a potential, okay? So these are just starting benchmarks, okay? Starting benchmarks. Now, recap with me a little bit. If it is, um, 
if, if the cost per link click is, let's say, over $1, let's say it's over a dollar, what are we going to do? You tell me, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? What are we going to try? Okay, we'll test the images. Yep, what else? Bruce image, John image, American congruency. Not congruency yet, because we're just talking clicks right here. So not congruency yet. Headline we can change, yep. We can put in an emoji. Copy, yep. And audience, you got it. Copy and then the audience, you got it, okay. So those are different metrics that you can test, you can change, you can whatever. Who remembers, are we supposed to change the ads? Do we wanna change the existing ad or what do we wanna to do to the ad? How are we going to test that? How are we gonna try something? We're never gonna change the ad, what are we gonna do? We're gonna duplicate it first. You guys got it, awesome, you guys are paying attention. We're going to duplicate the ad and try it again, okay? So for instance, if we're trying new audiences, the audiences are stored in the ad set, okay? So in Facebook ads, if you're new to this game, look in the top left of what I'm drawing up here. There are campaigns, there are ad sets, and there are ads, okay? Ads. Now if you think of Facebook like a, like a filing cabinet, your Facebook ads in general is like a filing cabinet, right? And if I pull out, um, let's say I pull out a drawer, one drawer of the filing cabinet is our campaign, okay? That's the drawer. The ad sets is like a folder, okay? A folder inside of the drawer. And then the ads are the individual sheets inside of there. So the ads are gonna have all the images, they're gonna have the headline, the ad copy. The ad sets is gonna contain your budget, it's gonna contain the audience, so if I wanna test a new audience, I'm gonna to have to clone or duplicate the ad set. If I wanna just test new headline, but I want the same audience, I'm gonna test, I'm gonna duplicate the ad itself. Okay, if you're new to Facebook ads, you haven't run Facebook ads, that's okay. Once you get into Facebook ads and you start running them, you'll figure that piece out, you'll say, oh, I remember Matt talked about the ad sets. That's where the audience goes. So this makes sense. Okay. So if you're not there yet, don't get overwhelmed. Don't freak out. You'll get there. Okay. All right. So we can test all those other variables. What are we um, after cost per click? What's that main next uh, metric that we're going to be testing? What is it? Type to me in the chat. What is it? Uh, we have Lorena got it. Happy got it. Bruce got it, Alexis got it, Fadla got it. Uh, not that, Umar. Um, Deborah got it, Mary got it, John got it, Jamel got it, it's CPL. CPL, cost per, per lead. And what are we looking for in terms of cost per lead? What are we looking for? What's our metric? What's the goal? Bruce got it, Happy got it, Saad got it. Yes, it is under $3. That's what we're looking for as our goal. Now, I'd like to see you under one. I'd like to see cost per leads coming in around a dollar per lead, and if you do a really, really good job of telling your story and really maintaining your message. Now, if we get click-through rate, our cost per click down, in into the metrics that we talked about here, but our cost per lead is over $3, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna test? What are we gonna try? What's, what's the game plan if we're over $3 on our cost per lead? What's wrong? Type to me. Big word right there, right? We're gonna test our congruency. Yes, good job. We have pro marketers in here right now. Test the headline, we're gonna look Okay, is what I'm writing my ad about, is that actually what's showing up on my opt-in page? And if not, well, what the heck's going on, right? Now, the final piece here, when I said cost per purchase or cost per acquisition, what you're going to be looking at there is 
the percentage of people who opt in and become a lead to the percentage of people who purchase. So in the same way that you would want congruency from your Facebook ad, look up here in the top right of what I'm drawing. Same way that you would want congruency here to the opt-in page. You also want to have congruency for the rest of your funnel to the point where they purchase. doesn't matter how many steps you have, but you, you, it has to be congruent from the very first Facebook ad all the way to the end of the messaging. Does that make sense to you? Type yes if that makes sense because this is literally the most important. This is everything in marketing. I type to me yes if this makes sense. This is market. If you don't get anything else from everything that I say, this is marketing. Okay? It's not about being super cute. It's not about um, uh, these super creative. You don't have to be that kind of a marketer. You can be straightforward. Your messaging can be very to the point, and you can just be congruent the whole way. So if you're an affiliate, you got to go look at the sales material for what you're selling, or if you work for a company that's selling light bulbs or, I don't know, iPad cases or covers, or if you're selling microphones, you got to know what you're selling. And then you have to reverse engineer and start your ads with that in mind, okay? That's what I tell people over and over and over and over again. Those are the people who win in the paid advertising platform, okay? So ultimately, if your cost per purchase is too high, now that depends on what you're selling, that depends on your metrics, but if your cost per purchase is too high, then you know that your messaging in your ads and your opt-ins, even though they're getting good rates up until that point, it's not congruent with what's going on in the back-end sales process, okay? All right, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Is that helpful for you guys? Some of you who are actually running ads, is this helpful? Type to me, like, what's one big thing you learned? Um, Fadla's got a good question. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, Mary says, great lesson, said that was good, so helpful, okay. Fadla says, how long do you wait to analyze an ad and watch the click-through rate? Good question. Usually it's about four or five days, okay, and it depends, Fadla. So let's say your budget is $5 a day, I'm gonna give it about a week. If your budget is, let's say, $15 a day, I know in about four to five days how that thing's gonna perform, okay. So I'm gonna give it a full four-day go, if I'm doing about 10 bucks a day, that's usually like if I'm just getting started, that's where I'll start. 10 bucks a day, let's throw it out, let's see what happens. If you have a bigger one, maybe you go 100 day, maybe it's 500, maybe it's $1,000 a day. Um, but usually you know pretty quick, if your cost per lead is, let's say it's $4 per lead, you're gonna need to spend about five times that in order to know, okay? So generally what I tell people is spend at least 15 to $20 if you're going for a cost per lead of $3 so you have a good idea of what's working and what's not, okay? Uh, Josh, you don't want to copy other people's ads. Don't copy people's ads. Don't use other people. Just you're going to learn throughout the process if you haven't already how to write really great ads with us, okay? If you're a little newer to the process, that's okay. But um, learn how to write your own ads. You don't want to copy other people's ads. It's just, it doesn't work, period. I mean, a lot of people will say, hey, you can use carbon copy all my stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can't. You need to learn that as a skill. So don't go, basically, Josh, here's what I tell you is, if you're on Facebook or Instagram and you're looking around, you get captured by an ad and it's like, whoa, that was a really great ad. Well, then store it, write it down, copy and paste it, and study why, why was that a good ad, right? And then go write your own ads for yourself. That's, that's what I tell people, okay? Okay, hopefully that was helpful information. Um, less than $10, will it get results? It depends, Saad, if you, if you want $10 per day. Um, then yes, if you're just spending $10 in grand total, 10 US dollars, then no. I mean, you might get a couple leads, but you're not gonna get a bunch of purchases from 10 US dollars. Uh, Fadla says, if after two days, 
you see that your cost per lead is too high, do you have to stop it? No. So two days is nothing, right? So if everything's going pretty well, but your cost per lead is too high, let that run for an additional five to seven days because generally Facebook's algorithm is a learning algorithm. It will learn and get your costs lower based on kind of figuring out who's your ideal person, who's, who should we be sending this out to, who shouldn't we be sending this out to. It'll do some learning and get those costs down. Um, do solo ads still have a click-through rate? Uh, yeah, yeah, solo ads have a click-through rate. Generally, um, the email provider should provide you with that. I, I'm just gonna be real frank with everybody here on this call. I would, if I were you and I was ever in the game of, of doing paid advertising, if I was gonna put any money to, to advertising, there is literally not a single day out of, give me a thousand days and I have to choose um, Facebook and Instagram versus, or, or Google versus solo ads, there's not one day in a thousand that I would ever choose to run solo ads, period, that's me. Um, can you get leads quick? Can it go fast? Yep. Um, but generally speaking, there's not a single day that I would ever run a solo ad. Never, ever, 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 ever. The only time I would run a solo ad is if I knew the person who I was buying it from and I knew it was a buyer's list. Meaning I got to advertise specifically to their email list full of people who have purchased a product from him before. Solo ads don't convert uh, most of the time. I should say there's a little caveat, but they usually won't convert. It's usually trash traffic. Even if people say it's tier one, high quality traffic, blah, blah, blah. Generally, um, no, it just doesn't convert. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on solo ads. It just doesn't work, period. And go ask, you know, you're going to see testimonials on people's page. How do you know that those are even real and authentic, right? That industry is one of the most just sketchy, um, the data practices there are sketchy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch solo ads with a 10 foot pole, but that's just me. That's why I, you come on these things and I'm constantly hammering, 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 hammering on Facebook and Instagram ads because for the same amount of money, guess what? You get to control the branding over and over and over again. And I've coached thousands and thousands of people getting into this industry. I have uh, I've worked closely with nine figure, eight figure, seven figure earners on the internet. Never one time, I, not a single time have I seen somebody build wealth from solo ads. Never, never build a business from solo ads. Not one single time. So if you want me to shoot straight with you, I'm shooting straight with you. I've been in this industry for 10 years. I have, I, and I'm looking at the comments right now and all I see is, yep, they'd never worked for me. I literally have comments sitting right here. Yep, never worked for me. Couldn't get them to work. I've never once said that on a webinar and had somebody come back to me and say, hey, no, I made, you know, $85,000 last month with solo ads. Doesn't happen. Doesn't work, doesn't work. And a lot of people aren't willing to say it. A lot of people aren't, I don't know why, just doesn't work, period. It's easy, it's fast, it's quick. You can get a bunch of leads really fast. Is that really your goal? The reason that they don't make money, by the way, is this. Alexis just asked a great question. Now, look at me. I need you to be looking at me because I'm gonna use my hands to talk here. If you have provider number one here, provider number two here, provider number three here, provider number four here, provider number five here, okay? You have five different solo ad vendors. They have email lists that you can essentially rent out, pay them $1,000 to run a, run a campaign to their email list, right? Generally, a lot of times what's happening is that these lists have been sold to each other so they've run solo ads to another guy's list of solo ads and this guy's rented his list to this guy and this guy has sold his list over to this guy. So maybe you buy one from this guy and then next month he sells it to this guy and you end up running the emails because you bought from this guy the next time, you end up buying solo ads from this guy the next time. And then it's the same list that you already bought from. Like this happens all the time. 
I just last month with one of the most reputable solo ad providers, I just started doing a little digging into his support process and the way that he acquires people onto his email lists, but which by the way, he's a solo ad vendor. And I was shocked at the, at the ways that he gets people's emails onto his list. I was like, this is the, this is the spammiest thing I've ever seen. So look, and think through this final thing. Think through this. Josh, I'm not going to throw anybody by name under the bus. I will say this to you, Josh. If I were you, I would not buy solo ads from that vendor. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but here's what I would say. Um, it's recycled material. But here's the other thing. Think through this. If you want to control your brand, you want to build a brand, okay, that's long-term. Long-term, okay? If, if you want to build a brand long-term, then you want to control the messaging and the branding from day one. Fundamentally with a solo ad, you cannot do it because you're playing on someone else's email list with who God knows what they did to get on that list. We know it's probably not a buyer's list, okay? If you start with Facebook and Instagram, if you start with Google, from the first click, the first sentence, the first image, the first headline, it is all you and your branding period. So you know exactly the quality of this lead. You know what they've heard, read, watched, everything. Then your mark, you can control the buyer's experience start to finish. Get that? This is so huge. Okay. We're a little bit over time for today. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, Hopefully none of you go run to buy solo ads after this. <laughs> um, but uh, let's say hey, we'll be back next Monday. If you missed it or you want to rewatch, this will get put up in your back office. Uh, usually in a few hours, you go to products, marketers club, and you go to the replays. Okay. It's all in your back office. Um, have a great rest of your week, guys. Happy Monday. Let's rock and roll. Take it easy. See ya.